Well hello and welcome to another video. This time out we're going to be looking at this Roberts Rambler. Now Roberts made the Rambler between 1975 and 83. It was quite a popular set. It was their sort of base model and it was offered in various different uh, coverings but this one is very rare. Now my good friend Paul over at Cody's Radio Workshop had not seen this one before and Paul collects and restores Robert's radios in particular. Now we did manage to find a picture of a blue one so this is not a recover this is an original Robert's radio. I did have in my mind when I first mentioned it to Paul I had seen one of these before on eBay years ago but I couldn't remember where and I couldn't remember it if it was just my memory tricking me but as I say we did manage to find um, a version of this with a blue uh, background instead of the brown hair so let's have a look at it it's in this sort of kaleidoscope type of uh, pattern here nothing particularly special about the radio itself this one's a little bit worn around the upper edges along the front of the handle here but you can see the original brown shade here um, the radio itself is just the standard Roberts Rambler but uh, this pattern though I don't like it at all uh, it's it's a very rare and limited um, edition radio I would say so at the moment it works but the volume is very very low so I'm going to go in uh, have a look at what's wrong um, I'm not sure anyone wants to see any more capacitor changes but uh, there's only about five or six capacitors in there to have a look at I suspect that's what it might be um, I have bridged a couple of them and that's made no no difference to the sound at all uh, so we'll go inside clean the wave change switches uh, see if that makes a difference and if not we'll start having a further look at the capacitors um, as I say I won't show me changing those because uh, if I see another uh, capacitor changing video I'm going to scream so quite a simple set just a two wave band set with a small uh, 12 ohm speaker quite bizarrely not a 4, 8 or 16, It's this one's a 12 quite uh, quite unusual this one, I've had a look at the transistor date codes inside this one seems to be dated to 1977 the transistors so I would suggest this was introduced into the market maybe late 1977 or early 1978 not a lot else to say other than that but uh, yeah quite a unique and uh, rare set now I'm gonna pop off and see if I can get this one working so I've started working on this radio started to fault find it um, it's got very very low volume it's really really quiet and obviously there's the first thing you suspect is the capacitor across the speaker as I mentioned earlier I had already bridged some or not all if if not all uh, the capacitors with a brand new one and uh, that hadn't made any difference uh, I was sort of thinking it's not the capacitors it isn't so the next obvious um, suspect is the volume control and lo and behold it's the volume control um, we're going to take a close look under the microscope and see what we can see but uh, I suspect it might be his contacts here Right, I'm in the final stages um, of reassembling this Roberts now. I've replaced all the capacitors in here, probably no need to because the fault was in that uh, dodgy volume pot which I've replaced. 
what we're going to do now is we're just going to sort out the IF which is 470 um, I've got uh, the output from the signal generator what is just there uh, at 470 I've just got that rubber grommet there insulating the uh, signal from the chassis here and we're going to just switch the modulation on and we're going to align the set and I've just got my scope up here and all that's doing is just looking for a peak tune for maximum smoke and I think this is pretty much spot on just turn the, uh, turn the signal generator down a bit that the volts per division up I think this is pretty much pretty much spot on anyway yeah yeah You can hear it fade. There we go, that's the IF aligned at 470. Next, uh, I'll just run through the uh, dial pointer alignment, but I would assume that's pretty much spot on anyway. Well, the next thing we need to do is to uh, Set the pointer to 200 meters on medium wave. Tune the signal generator to 1500 kilohertz, and then we need to adjust VC2 and VC4 so we hear the signal generator output through the speaker. And you can just hear it there. And I've got a screened radiating loop at the end of the bench here. That one I built to uh, Hacker's Design which the video is on uh, is on my channel so let's have a go at this and see where we get to so I've got the signal generator set quite low at the moment so we're just gonna Tune for maximum output. You see it's just there and we've gone past it now, so so let's just tune tune that again. That's about it. So each time, turn that down. So each time I'm actually stepping the output of the signal generator down until it's quite faint. So you can just hear it there. And I think that will do. Now we need to do the other end of the scale. Now the second part of alignment, or at least on medium wave, is it asks you to set the pointer here to where that to 526 meters, which is where this little pip is on the dial print. We've set the signal generator to 570 kilohertz, and we've got our frequency counter showing that. Now we're going to disconnect the frequency counter and plug it into the uh, loop and we should hear a tone there we go let's turn the signal generator down a little bit and it then asks us to trim T1 which is this transformer here for maximum smoke So we've gone past the peak, coming back up. Okay, 
turn the signal generator down a little bit. You can hear it's gone past it. There. That's pretty much done that. Long wave, my signal generator doesn't do long wave, unfortunately, because it's an American signal generator. So what we're going to do is just tune to BBC4 and see what's on there. So BBC4, there. I've enjoyed that, uh, that salad particularly. You wouldn't think watermelon and chilies would go well together, but they no. kind of do. It's about right, 1500 in the middle. What chefs come up with well, Good, not much to do fine. there. Yes. So that's it, that's the alignment done very, very quickly, very, very easy on this particular set. Um, and then we can reassemble it completely now. So just to recap what we've done here, as per Robert's instructions, We've tuned for maximum smoke on the IFs by uh, injecting 470 kilohertz, and we've adjusted these three pots here in order one, two, and three. We've then tuned the dial and turned the dial pointer to 200 meters here, as indicated here, and we've adjusted these two trimmers here. We've then gone up the other end of the dial to 526 metres there and we've adjusted this uh, IF transformer here. All for maximum smoke. Now it's a bit of a moot point because as more and more medium wave stations are getting turned off in the UK there's not very much to listen to but um, anyway that's what we've done so far. Um, if you're new to radio um, uh, alignment, this is a very, uh, it looks easy, but you need the equipment, which is a signal generator, a stable uh, signal generator, and you need some method of uh, indication of the output, either uh, an oscilloscope or an output meter, or something like this here, like a moving coil meter set on um, AC on low voltage just to give you an indication of maximum. Um, these things here are very delicate they're not screws you need to use the proper tool which is like a plastic uh, tool here to move these rather delicate coils which if you use a screwdriver a normal steel screwdriver can snap and break off these trimmers here, they in some sets, depending on how old they are, they can be rather delicate um, and a little bit of annoying to, you know, once you move them a little bit, it can take you ages just to get the right spot. But uh, this is a relatively easy set to work on. And the last thing I did just off camera was just move this coil just a touch. You can see my finger marks and where it originally was, just to uh, aid that 526 meters maximum smoke it didn't need moving a lot but you can move these up and you know along that's the whole point of this rubber strip and then they're sealed with wax so I'll just go over with my soldering on and just heat that up again a little bit so it doesn't move again there we are relatively easy on one of these sets lots of access room yeah quite easy Right, after getting the uh, alignment sorted out, what we can do now is uh, fit the radio back together. So, put the dial on. Put these retaining strips on. Choosing the best side. Sometimes these get moisture between the plastic and the uh, and the inside bit and can look a bit mouldy. That's a little bit better. Uh, these fibre strips go down these slots here. Remember, I've got to push the handle right the way over. Pull 
these wires down. Robert's radio is an ideal first set for someone to work on. Um, really nice and easy in all respects to work on. We can get posi drive in there. If anyone has watched John Ward's recent video on the difference between PosiDrive and Philips, you'll know. And I am using a Philips on a PosiDrive, so there we go. And the last thing to do here is just uh, connect the speaker up, of course. Which is going to be fun, isn't it? Yes, yeah, really easy radio to work on, easy to get apart, there's uh, five or six capacitors inside, six, um, and that's basically it, really quite easy. Knobs back on, these aren't handed. Easy. Put the bottom on. Let's put a battery inside. Let's not put a battery inside. This is one I've restuffed. Does it? Which way around? That should do. I'll leave that off now because it's coming out. So. Uh, 2021, the Camus Cup semi final 2021 is seeing Hull FC trying to mount a, a comeback here again. You view, you can find us on channel 7. That was my old if you have a computer, DBC Cambridgeshire station, you my, can listen live my to local. BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. Yeah. So there we go, a bit of long wave, not much. And he was involved in a world record last wicket stand. A bit of cricket. Yeah. Not much to hear on long wave. That'll probably come in a little bit later this evening. Not very good at all. So there we go. Not the uh, not the nicest, prettiest set in the world, but uh, and I am going to replace this one. Day. I'll get another Rambler for spares or something, and just get this strip out because it's got a nasty ding in it. But yeah, it's um, as I said at the start, an unusual and uh, rare set. Uh, probably won't be now. Probably people will be looking out for these. Um, yeah.